Hey there! Welcome to Woodby Productions' new mini-series highlighting Minnesotan filmmaker Peter Hurd and his motion picture, The Control Group. Yes, and in this eight-part interview series, we're going to be covering the movie-making process from start to finish, looking at things like, what's it like shooting a movie in the frigid wastes of Minnesota? What's it like hiring a big-name actor? What about business, legal, safety concerns, all of that jazz? But before we kick off and learn more about Peter's inspiration for the control group, let's watch the trailer. If this agency is going to use this drug for overseas interrogations, why are they using college students? You're not my highest priority right now, as you should well know. Did you just wake up? Yeah. More importantly, where the hell are we? Some kind of hospital. If this was a hospital, we would have found an exit by now. They don't want us to find a way out. Guys, we gotta go now! I know what you're doing! He's gonna go in the machine himself. So it's a interesting horror mashup, genre mashup, about a group of college students that are trapped in an abandoned insane asylum, find out they're the subjects of secret government experiments, and that the asylum is also haunted by a ghost of a former patient that's killing off both the scientists and the kids so they all have to team up to escape. It was just about making making a horror movie that was fun, that was fresh, that you hadn't seen before. You know, like for me as a horror fan and for a lot of other fans, you know, if you're obsessed with horror, you've kind of seen it all and you want to see something new. So that's what I set out to do, deliver horror fans something they haven't seen before. Yeah, so it was interesting. During the development process, um, at first I had no idea what I wanted to do for the story or the script. I had the location was what came about first, which was the uh, Kirkbride Mental Hospital in Fergus Falls, and that it was available for, sh for shooting for a very narrow window, about three months. And at the end of that three months, the plan at the time was that the city was going to demolish the building, and that was it. But up until then, it was free reign for shooting, and they weren't going to charge us to use it. So I'm like, okay, perfect. Huge location. Uh, I mean, there were some fees involved with it, but it, it didn't end up being that much. It was very affordable. And since they were going to tear it down, our understanding at first was that we were going to basically be able to do whatever we wanted in the building. Um, that ended up changing later on. But it was a pretty perfect opportunity at the time, but we only had three months to do it. You know, I didn't have a year to sit around and, make contacts and make relationships. It was like the movie had to be shot that summer. And this was starting in January that I got the location. So we ended up, we got it in January. We ended up starting filming, I think around August 15th. We shot mid August to mid September. Uh, the building was supposed to be demolished shortly after that did not happen. It is actually still up today. I'm not sure if it's any longer available for filming. Um, but yeah, we were under the gun. So the, the location was the first thing we had. So I just had to write a script, have a script written that matched that location. So that's where the idea began. So I was thinking about horror ideas that take place in this asylum, which was pretty open-ended. It was a huge building, but we wanted something that naturally lent itself to it. Um, we discussed a couple different ideas for plots, genres, ideas we could do. And they all seemed, we liked them all, but they all seemed like things we had d done before, seen before in a million movies. You know, oh, the asylum could be haunted. Well, we've seen that before. Well, there could be scientists doing illegal experiments in there. Well, we've seen that before. Like, okay, there could be kids who wake up and they have no idea how they got there. Well, we've seen that before. So the thought process eventually circled to, well, have we seen all of these things together in the same movie? I was like, not really. 
And so it was kind of an interesting experiment to take these tropes and these situations and these character types that in and of themselves aren't very original. I mean, we wanted to give each of them an original spin, but, you know, we've seen Haunted Asylums, we've seen Mad Doctors and all that, but putting it all together into one movie made it feel very fresh. It made it feel like a new type of horror movie in a way. Like, it, it didn't, at least to me, it didn't feel like something I had seen before because there were so many elements that I'm not used to seeing in a movie together. So that, that was essentially what made it feel original to me. The control group itself has a page on Facebook. Um, we don't have a Twitter page because it's not really worth it to start that many followers, but they can follow me personally on Twitter and I post all the updates about the film there. What is your Twitter handle? Uh, heard is the word 52. Thanks for tuning in. Come back next week to learn about casting a movie with a low budget shot in Minnesota. See you next week. See ya.